I would like to acknowledge with thankfulness and gratitude that we are meeting today on the traditional territory of the Wissanik people. So our campaign this year is fairly unique with everything that's been going on in the world right now. I guess the big question for us is what's next? Is there going to be a second wave or if there is, can we handle it? My way of thinking in order to get ready, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic currently and we don't know what's coming. We have ideas, we have thoughts, we have opinions, but we need to be ready for surge in the hospital perhaps people with sickness, we have flu season coming on us, different resource requirements. So when I'm thinking about us getting ready in the hospital, we need to be ready for almost anything, a disaster for example. And I think the biggest thing for us is opening that third operating room. We need to be able to complete the backlog of surgeries and testings in case another wave does hit. So it's going to enable us to do that as well as patient care and patient safety. You know, our hospital is not that big and there was times where unfortunately patients were in the hallways waiting for a room to come up and we can't do that anymore. So we need to make sure that we've got an overrun place that we can safely we have our patients and this campaign is going to be able to fund that to allow us to facilitate all of that. We have areas that we can overflow into. We want to make sure people in the hospital are safe and you're safe. SENPEN has undergone some significant changes uh, since the beginning of COVID. Initially the fear left us watching what was happening around the world. We were in shock and awe. We felt like we were waiting. Uh, for Doomsday. So we ramped up really quickly, got together very closely as a leadership team and moved rapidly to make changes. When we are able to prepare, then our fear level is reduced and we have confidence that the healthcare workers in our community have the tools they need to look after us if we need it. Donations this year uh, are going towards our efficiencies in the OR so we can actually uh, effectively tackle the wait lists that are really preventing patients from getting into surgeries. It's essential for us to be able to ramp up and get to 130% of what are expected pre-COVID and we'll be able to do that with support uh, of ongoing equipment and the needs uh, in our community. And that's going to be based on the fact that we've done an amazing job at flattening the curve and we're just going to need to keep working hard at that and making sure that as these patients come in we have safe places to put them. Community donations are needed for a variety of things. What we really want to be ready for is to be able to take care of our community. We both feel really uh, fortunate to live here. Being uh, restricted to base like we all have been for the last little while it just makes you grow more in appreciation of the way of life, the ability to feel safe, feel secure, and above all, if you get sick, know that there's a hospital there that can take you in and look after you. And we can't take that for granted. It's time for each person in the community to think about their responsibility to kind of step up in all of this because we're so used to it being the other way. It really seems like at this time that it's, the community deserves the response that is going to support all of us, everybody here. If there's ever a, a clear basis for the need, it's, it's really right now. Our community rises to every challenge and our community knows how to get things done. 